to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. And one guy. Please save time if, if, if you are the one, just so that save us all of the time. How long has it been? Huh? Six months. How about you? Huh? I'm seeing your hands chained. Your own situation. There's, there's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. There's still one more lady. There's one more lady. The Lord is showing me. Hallelujah. Come, I have to pray for you. Yours is more than a sleep problem. Hold my hands. I cast this chain in the name of Jesus Christ. Let her go right now. And I break by the power of the Holy Spirit. This spirit that causes you not to sleep. You are set free in the name of Jesus Christ. How many months? Six months. In the name of Jesus Christ, I set you free by the power of the Holy Spirit. Be free right now. You will begin to sleep normally in the name of Jesus Christ. The Lord is touching someone's ear right now as I speak. The Lord is touching someone's ear. You will literally feel as though a cotton bud is put in your ear and all of a sudden, it will open up and become clearer. Thank you, Lord Jesus. I give you praise. Thank you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord is healing a lady of a breast lump. You began to see this. You've not even shared it with many people. Breast lump is living right now right now dissolving and going back to hell never to return to you again hallelujah hallelujah there are four people listen there are four families that as i speak right now the angel of the lord is going to their homes and is causing major breakthroughs listen listen mm. It's not, it's not just prophecy for everybody. Four exact people. One. There are four of them. Two. The angel of the Lord literally, literally, literally is entering these homes and they are receiving dramatic breakthroughs. Dramatic breakthroughs. The Lord is showing me over ten people and I see academic chains this is what I see 10 people 10 people and this is not your fault 10 people I'm going to begin to count 1 to 10 and goodness it's like fire 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 I cast those spirits 2 3 4 5 6 badakata. 7 8 9 I cast those chains. I cast those chains. I cast those chains. It comes to an end. I tell you it comes to an end that chain breaks now and forever it comes to an end 
Hallelujah. Let's just flow with what the Holy Spirit is doing. If this is all he does tonight, that's all right. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing two eyes in the spirit. And God wants to open up at least 19 people here in the realm of visions and supernatural experiences. Listen, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, prophetic fountains, those eyes in the spirit, shake it at a parata. At least 19 people, at least 19 people, Shataka Bariata, fire, physical fire coming upon your eyes, physical fire coming upon your eyes. Open them up, oh God, to these dimensions of supernatural revelations. Hallelujah. I'm seeing the angel of the Lord. And God wants to cause barrenness from two families. Now, two families, right now, just two families. Father, wherever these families are represented, right now, let your power visit and set them free now. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, this row. All of you here, just lift your hands. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. From the front, right to the back, there are people that God again is visiting their families. Families, families. God is bringing breakthrough right now right now just this row lord in the name of jesus let those families let the angel of the lord there are angels walking through this crowd right now right now right now in the name that is above all names angels of the lord walking to families performing specific miracles specific miracles specific miracles Specific miracles. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. Hallelujah. I cast that spirit from this lady. In the name of Jesus Christ. Lift your hands, everyone. Lift your hands. There are some devils that need to leave this place right now. Hallelujah. Listen. 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 God is bringing mighty deliverance for people now. Every service is miracle service. Are you getting my point now? We're going to shout that name, Jesus. My goodness. I'm telling you, major deliverances that will bring breakthroughs. Breakthroughs. 
the symbol. Hallelujah. At the count of three, I want you to shout that name. I command every devil and every spirit, every act of witchcraft and divination in the name of Jesus and at the count of three, they must come out of their hiding places and go never to return. Are you ready now? One, two, three. I cause devils now. I cause spirits now. I cause spirits, every wicked spirit out of God's people, out of every family. Now I break spells, I break witchcraft, I break the power of divination. Bring them out. Bring them out. I cost that power. It's not just them. Families. They are families. I set fire. 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 Upon altars. I set fire. I set fire. Upon Hallelujah. Lift your hands again. God is visiting families. This is not about you. All the people here are representing families. Lift your hands. Oh, the fire of God must fish them out. There is no hiding for any spirit. Shh. At the count of three, you will shout that name at the top of your voice. And a sword of the spirit will go to your family. There must be deliverance tonight. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Hallelujah. The Bible says, How awe inspiring are your ways? It says, Through the greatness of thy power shall thy enemies submit themselves. All the people you see here, they are representing their families. God is stepping into families. Those doors must be open. I see ancient gates in the spirit. Ancient gates. And I'm about to command them to open. Listen. When I command those gates to open, those affected, you will feel it physically. These are the gates that cause limitations over people and families. But in the name that is above all names, I come tonight under this apostolic and prophetic anointing. <laughs> I command you be open. I command you be open. I 
Any family, lift your hands that is tied down by any kind of limitation. I don't care what it is. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, if that spirit has survived anywhere else, in this place, this is the mount of the Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command those doors open now. I command those doors open now. Doors of breakthrough be 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 open now. By the force of the spirit, be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Be open now. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on, shout it, shout it. Say after me in the name of Jesus. I declare that every force stopping the advancement of my family. By the fire of the Holy Ghost. Live now. Lift your voice and begin to pray. Every power, you must do it tonight. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Pick up your Bibles, Daniel chapter 10. The devil is in trouble tonight. Daniel chapter 10. You have come for koinonia. It's an experience. It's a mountain. Something must change about your life. Daniel chapter 10. Verse 10. And behold. And hand touched me. And set me upon my knees and upon the palms of my hands. And he said unto me, O Daniel, a man greatly beloved, understand the words that I speak unto thee and stand upright. For unto thee I am now sent. And when he had spoken this word to me, I stood trembling. Verse 12. Then said he unto me, Fear not. Daniel had been fasting and praying. He said, for from the first day that thou didst set thy heart to understand and to chasten thyself before thy God, thy words were heard and I am come to thee for thy words. Verse 13. But the prince, listen, but the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me one and twenty days and lo, Michael, one of the chief princes came to help me and I remained there with the kings of Persia. Listen, the Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood. Then it says against principalities, against powers, then against rulers, then against spiritual wickedness. They do not operate in the earth realm. The Bible says they operate in the heavenlies. This prince of Persia 
was the territorial spirit across the land of Persia. So when Gabriel was bringing the answer, the solution, that prince stopped him. I have been put in charge of this territory to make sure that breakthrough does not come to men. To make sure that men are not lifted. But there was a man in the earth realm who kept praying. And while he prayed, it was on the strength of his authorization. The, from the arsenals of heaven, the archangel Michael had to come. Because he's the archangel in charge of war. We are going to pray tonight. Every land has territories. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Every land has territories. And there are spirits. Those of you who have listened to the message, give me this mountain. There is a spiritual dimension to life. And there are, met, there are certain things that will never manifest in your life until you prevail in prayer. Jacob held on to him. He said, I will not let you go. He said, leave me for the day break it. He said, no way. He said, what is thy name? He said, Jacob. He said, your name will be changed to Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God. And you have prevailed. Hallelujah. We are going to pray. Don't let anybody fool you and tell you what we just read was the Old Testament. And in the New Testament, when you pray, it just comes. It, 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 it makes... Listen, the kingdom of God is a system. The earth realm is a system. Are you getting my point? It is as soon as Zion travails, hallelujah, that she will put forth. There is a birthing. This is the ninth month. If you didn't come to pray tonight, I'm so happy about the rain. Because you won't go anywhere. We are going to pray. Ah. Hallelujah. Are you ready to pray now? Yes, we are going to pray. Listen. We are going to confront powers. Zechariah chapter 1, please, quickly. Zechariah chapter 1, verse 18. Zechariah chapter 1. Verse 18. Then I lifted up my eyes and I saw, and I beheld what? Four horns. A horn is a symbol of authority. Next verse. And I said unto the angel that talked with me, What be these? What are these horns? And he answered me, These are the horns that have scattered Judah. These are the horns that have scattered Jerusalem. These are the horns that are making your father to never reconcile with your mother. These are the horns that make finances to stop when it's about to come. These are the horns hindering the gates of marriage. Verse 20. And the Lord showed me four carpenters. Zembra koto then I said, what come this to do? He said, these are the horns that have scattered Judah. Judah means praise. These are the horns that have robbed you of your testimony, of your joy. He said, so that no man does what? Lift up his head. They have put a barrier around your family and your life. And they have said, no man will lift up his head. So every time you want to lift up your head, there are horns. They station, the, hear me, and take seriously what I'm saying. They have drawn the boundaries. Man, takata, goodness. I tell you, I sense deliverance fire in this place tonight. Oh, those horns must leave. For sure. There are horns stationed across territories. To make sure that men do not rise. Some of you, this is a limitation. You are the first person in your family to get to the university. There are horns. But tonight, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, we are going to step out and put on our priestly regalia. We are going to confront the heavens. He told Job, he said, has thou commanded thy morning? Did you speak into the heavenly territories? Did you command the things to align themselves? We are praying tonight. The Bible says the stars fought for Deborah. She was a warrior and the constellations arranged themselves.
to make sure that enchantments could not go to the heavens. Lift your voice. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Come on now. You have to be more serious than this. Say in the name of Jesus. I declare. I declare. By the power of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. All right. That every power across my territory that wants to stop me and stop my family from rising up I challenge you tonight by the blood of Jesus lift your voice and begin to pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Oh, we are praying tonight. Jude 1. Jude 1 verse 9. You will see tonight that Satan is interested in this body that you wear. Jude 1. Everyone read. Want to read. Hold on. Do you see Michael again? Michael in Daniel contending against powers. He shows up again in the book of Jude. Read on. Want to read? Hold on. He disputed about the what? Spirit, soul, body. Satan wanted the body of a man. Satan wants the bodies of men, not just their spirits. Because without a body, without a body, demonic activities cannot be carried out. The church is called the body that the Holy Ghost uses. It's called the body of Christ. The body that the Holy Ghost wears. There is a law in this realm that any spirit that does not have a body cannot function in this realm. So Satan wants the body of Moses. If he looked for the body of Moses, Moses in the Old Testament, how much more your own body? So he will afflict you. He wants your body. So he will manipulate your body and all kinds of objects moving around. But the Bible says, Know ye not that your bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. Know ye not. Listen. We are going to pray. I'm establishing a prayer point. Jesus entered the temple, which was his body, and he found out that there were strangers in that temple. Are you getting my point now? Those who should be in the temple were not there. 
and he found people doing business in the temple there were transactions going on in his body that's the same way satan carries out all kinds of transactions in human bodies and you hear people complaining objects are moving in my body you see people sleep in the night and all kinds of devilish things come to oppress them tonight we are going to pray are you getting my point please if you are sitting except you are under the anointing stand up and let's take some time to pray you must get angry tonight and let's pray because something must break hallelujah are you ready to pray lift up your voice say after me in the name of jesus Shout it in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I, declare I declare that my body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. My body belongs to Jesus. Therefore, every strange spirit attempting to hold on to my body, I command you right now. Depart from my body now. Lift your voice and pray. Every stranger. Every stranger, this body is the temple of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everywhere the gospel was preached, Jesus demonstrated that he was not only interested in the spirits of men, but their bodies. Yes, what healing does to your body is what salvation does to your spirit man. Hallelujah. We are going to cause the root of sickness. I want you to get ready because the devil is in trouble. There's fire burning in this place this night. No matter how mad a man is, he does not enter fire by mistake in the name of madness. Are you getting what I'm saying? No matter how stupid a man is, in his insanity, he knows fire when he sees it. The Bible says he maketh his ministers wings. Are you getting my point? And his messengers flames, flames of fire. Every stranger in your body is about to leave. I don't care what it is called. Sickness is that. Let me tell you how you know that these things are demonic. Because many of us, when you pray on it, it will go. And then later on it will return. You are a lady, they pray for you. And then for one or two or three months, you find out that your period just comes normally. No pain, no nothing. And then in the fourth month, it backfires again. There are people, recurrent headache, all kinds of devils. A growth comes and then it goes. You pray and try to treat it, it goes. We are going to set it on fire right now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? The Bible says, know ye not that your body. I showed you from the book of Jude. Satan was fighting with Michael over the body of Moses. Hallelujah. This body 
is your legal access for living and functioning in this realm. If it is battered beyond repair, your spirit will no longer be able to stay there and it will have to leave. So if Satan cannot get to manipulate your mind, he will batter your body in a way that your spirit cannot live and it will have to go. We are going to pray. Many of us, as you are praying right now, you will be surprised. Huh? Now is the time to pray all those. Hold on, please, one minute. Genotype. Huh? I've read my Bible from Genesis. Please listen. This is very serious what I'm sharing. There's no mention of any nonsense of genotype in this Bible. Have you read your Bible? There are many ladies right now, many guys, they cannot even get married. They can't think of anything because the devil put one rubbish embargo called genotype. S, S, A, S and all of those rubbish. Now you want to get married or you want to settle down, they tell you no. Health wise, every parent is carrying their child and running away. The devil is in trouble tonight. We are going to pray. If he was not here, he should not be in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying. Whatever has affected this body has affected God's property. And we're going to pray and invoke his presence that he will rise in his jealousy and attack any stranger. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of you, as you pray, growth will disappear. See, the trouble is that Many of us have been praying, but we, we, of course, I know not here, but generally, we, we do not know the power of the corporate anointing. Psalm 133 talks of God depositing the blessing where people are gathered together in unity. That's different from your personal prayer life. Are you getting my point now? We are going to pray. There are traits of infirmities around your family. There are traits of infirmity in your life. There are many of us, all sorts of embarrassing conditions, skin problems, to the minutest, to anything. Hear me! No matter how small it is, it is according to your faith tonight. Are you getting what I'm saying? He said, whatever my father has not planted, whatever he has not planted, he must be uprooted. Don't sit down and tolerate it. What you tolerate in your body, the devil will use it to destroy you. But when you resist the devil, the Bible says he will flee. Lift up your voice. We are going to pray again. Say after me, in the name of Jesus Christ. Every sickness. Every infirmity. Every abnormality in my body hear the word of the Lord I command you to leave this body now I command you to leave this body now lift your voice and begin to pray
Joel chapter 2. Joel chapter 2, verse 24 and 25. Joel chapter 2. Let's start from verse 23. Joel 2, verse 23. Shikata ba 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 Verse 24. Verse 25. Shout it with all your heart. Shout it. Listen, listen, listen. We are still praying. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Based on the word of God. I place demand. For restoration. In my life. In my family. Hallelujah. We are going to pray that prayer again. You know the areas you want restoration. Please we are not playing games tonight. The presence of God is here. Hallelujah. When we get to that party, we will mention it. And we are going to pray. The Bible says, I will. It didn't say, I will send someone. I will supervise your restoration. Hallelujah. The years. We are going to say, Lord, turn the hands of time again. Turn the hands of time. Let that which the devil has stolen be restored. There are things that need to be restored tonight. Hallelujah. Say after me in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. I receive, I receive sevenfold, restoration sevenfold restoration of everything the devil has stolen in my life. Now mention them. Your health, whatever it is. Lift your voice and pray. Hallelujah. Lift your hands and give him thanks. We bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Because our eyes will see 
the desires of our hearts and our hands will handle it. Hallelujah. God bless you. Please sit down. Just give me 10, 15 minutes and we're out of here. If this is all we have done tonight. It is worth it. There's no place for you to sit, stand, sit on the floor, sit anywhere. Go ahead. The service is already on. So, Please, there should be no vacant seat. There are still people standing. The person is under the anointing. Let the person lie down on the floor and let someone use the seat. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what the word of God has said. Revelation is knowing how to make it work in your life. Hallelujah. Revelation is not knowing what God has said. It's not even knowing that there is a kingdom principle. That's not revelation. Revelation is knowing how to make that principle work in your life. If it cannot work in your life, then it's useless. Hallelujah. See, we keep sharpening ourselves like this, like arrows in the presence of God. We're sharpening ourselves. Because we're trusting God to attain a statue in the spirit. Where no power in existence can stop your fulfilling God's destiny for your life. You believe that? There is a generation that is depending upon our faithfulness. The Bible says, he that sows to the flesh will of the flesh reap corruption. And he that sows to the spirit will of the spirit reap life eternal. We are making investments in the spirit. We are laboring, we are traveling. You won't be surprised when you see your life and your prophetic destiny tomorrow because you will know that yes it is god's grace but paul said it this way i am what i am by the grace of god right but he said this grace was not showered upon me in that i labored more than ye all there is grace that manifests as the favor of god and there is grace that manifests as supernatural empowerment to do hallelujah the lord is changing your life i'm telling you gradually the bible says line upon line precept upon precept your value system your life the quality of your christian experience is changing and then like the 71 day he will trust you with responsibilities he will send you and you will be shocked to see that he has built you to be his finest the finest of the finest of the best don't trivialize what god is doing in your life brothers and sisters week after week you're submitting yourself to the dealings of the spirit and it will translate into something in your life you may not look like it now see that there is no outlet who wants to look good when you are rehearsing have you seen an athlete like that you are conscious of your shoe let it not have mud. no 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 when when you are training you will see footballers get dirty and all of that but when they lift that trophy huh they can now dress and enjoy the celebration my bible tells me that no man that warreth will entangle himself with civilian affairs these trainings will prune you it will it will it will build you listen to me it will challenge you it will stretch you it will provoke you but when you submit to the dealings of the spirit the end of it is peace something will happen in your life that money cannot buy something will happen in your life that is not common you will now know that it is not common to be yielded to the spirit 
It's not a gift. Not everybody is interested. There are many people who are born again. But very few people are interested in the things of the Spirit. So God is teaching us. We spend time now to pray and travel in the Spirit. You cannot imagine the levels of victory. And so you would just step home and you see that doors begin to open. And some of you, your loved ones will not know. They will just say, aha, things are working well now. Things don't just work. They are enforced in the spirit. Learn this. Learn this. Learn this. One day it will change. It's a waste of time. Time does not change things. Are you getting me? Engaging kingdom principles. 38 years. That man was at the pool of Bethesda. In less than 5 minutes he got up. He would have remained there forever. So the word of God that you are receiving. You must believe it. Please hear me. You must believe it. If you are just sitting down. And watching every week. And just looking and hoping. That this word will make sense one day. You may be deceiving yourself. The Bible says ever learning. Have you seen people like that? They have all of the revelation, but never coming to the comprehension of the truth. Depart from those kinds of people. When you come into the presence of God, give your heart. It says meditate on these things. Give yourself wholly to them. And it gives you an assurance. What's the assurance? That thy profiting may appear. Look, let me tell you. Um, you see, if your life does not bear fruit after a particular time, you will be frustrated. Because it's God that sees the heart. Men look at the outward appearance. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Men do not have the ability to see the heart. So your Christian experience must translate into a testimony that glorifies the name of the Lord. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If it does not, your family members will never see the relevance of your commitment to prayer and to the study of the word, the disciplines and the constraints of the spirit. Say, my life will bear fruit. Say it, my life will bear fruit. Brothers and sisters, if you go to your house and there is a sick person and you have a revelation and you pray for that sick person, stand up my brother, and you pray for that sick person and the sick person stands up, do you know that that is a sermon that is more than one year of beckoning up? You don't need to invite people and say, come for God. No, 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 no. The woman, at the, Samar the Samaritan woman said, come and see a man that has told me everything I've done. What is the result in your life that compels people to want to know about God? If your life continues to remain a barren wilderness, there is no reason why people should be attracted to your God. There was something that Ruth saw and she told Naomi. He said, my, your God will be my God. Hallelujah. It's not just for you to come and watch a man of God doing great things. No. It's to provoke your spirit and you go back with that anointing. You're not falling down for nothing. Say, I'm anointed. Say it. Some of you are even laughing at yourself. Say it. It has nothing to do with fivefold ministry. It has everything to do with being alive. Hallelujah. And you step into your house, you step into your place of work, and you step in as an ambassador, as an envoy. Don't let people mock your emoji. Emoji for nothing. Emoji, emoji. They keep calling you. When there's trouble, they pass you. You are emoji as a nickname. No. Emoji, you say yes. And they pass you and, and you are not contributing anything to the kingdom. Elisha said, hi, I love that guy. He said, let Naaman come and know that there is a prophet in Israel. Hallelujah. That there is a prophet in Israel. Can the devil look at your family and say, ah, if, if only I can shift Zuera out of the way and like a big hen, you stay there and say you are invited. I have become a shield 
He said, as for me and my house, for many of us, it's as for me and myself. It must translate beyond you. Are you getting my point? You shield others. You are minding your business and you see the devil trying to oppress somebody. You say, Satan is my business. It's my business. Whether you invite me or not, it is my business. You must let this person go. Hallelujah. Listen. It's not enough for you. Don't get used to seeing miracles, healings, deliverances, you know. In Koinonia, we are so used to miracles. When it happens, you just watch one of those things that's happened again. You see, it's a lesson. It's a handwriting upon your life. Are you hearing me? That God is challenging you and telling you that your life ought to be supernatural in every way. Not just by making noise and disturbing people when they are sleeping, praying in tongues. No, it must translate. It says, let your light so shine before who? Before yourself? Before men. You already know you have the light, but they do not know. He said, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good deeds. And as a result, praise your Father in heaven. When was the last time someone spoke to you about his situation and you said, that's all right. That's all right. I come in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. And you picked up your phone. You said, let's pray. Many of us, is just, hey, yeah. See, I just returned from Koinonia. It was powerful this night. Ah! You missed. And Ben said, I'm, I'm having a little stomach ache. Said, oh, it's like that. Let's, let's just lie down. It's too late. The chemist is closed. Oh, oh. No, 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 no. You need to get angry one day. Are you hearing what I'm saying? As soon as you get home, you hear your sister saying, finally, my name came out. They are about to, to downsize me and, and, and do all of that. And he said, oh, I'm sure that God knows how he will work things out. Look at what you are saying. You are the ambassador. You are the voice of God in that room. You must die. One of the things I've learned, listen to me. One of the things I've learned about working in the anointing is that you must die to your ego. Hello? Are you hearing what I'm saying? Many of us are so conscious. What if I, I tell the people God will bless you and God doesn't bless them? Tomorrow they will now see me and say, Pastor, that prayer, you know people are so funny. Pastor, you prayed and the prayer didn't work. Oh. And you feel stupid, you feel embarrassed. If I do well, God should take the glory. If nothing happens, who should take the shame? I, I answer me. Who should take the shame? So if you are taking the shame, you have been Hallelujah. Go and pray for the sick person. Pray. Let the person die in your hands. No problem. Just pray. You now go and find out what is wrong with you. And then the person says, there's, there's one wound. If I open it, you say, ah, you wouldn't have even told me. Look, just quietly go to the hospital. Oh. Challenge your faith. Hallelujah say me i'm not a man of god's wife i want peace i don't want to trouble satan let him know take away you see i believe that our mindsets are changing that mindset of i don't trouble you satan don't trouble me too let's all mind our business it does not work in this earth realm are you getting what i'm saying it does not work in the earth realm there are many of us i would not be surprised that there are some of us who sit down like that you believe that because you are not active in the things of the kingdom when the devil comes you will jump you and go and look for those who are really causing him trouble and he said the devil pass please pass i don't have anything i didn't look for any trouble it doesn't work that way satan does not disturb you because you have become a slave to him right but you must you must tear down the assaults of the devil over the lives of people say one more time i'm anointed say it i'm anointed the holy ghost just took over this meeting let's just flow with the way he's i'm anointed look at your hands everyone look at your hands i know you have been insulting it that it doesn't look nice forget about all those ones look at your hand whatever you have there is your hand 
whether it's rough or smooth, it's irrelevant. Just look at your hand. I'm talking about the spiritual, the spiritual content. I like you to say, my hands represent the hands of Jesus. They carry the anointing of the Holy Spirit. They can produce results and work wonders. Do you believe that? This is, God bless you, this is my mentality. This is my mentality. My hands are not just for eating. No. It's, there, is, there is something upon my hands. Jesus has placed his hands upon my own hands. Many of us, we keep falling down and rising, but we are not blessing anybody. I want to ask you a few questions. Just a few minutes and then we'll round up. Listen. How many of us believe we are anointed? We just said we are all anointed. The question I have for you tonight is, who has your anointing brought to the kingdom? Has your anointing been able to save anybody? I once was lost. Huh? Come brother. That this brother was lost and on the strength of the anointing that you have, whether it was to save him, to get him healed, he has now come into the saving knowledge of the kingdom. If your anointing, listen, I will tell you why many people do not see more of the anointing in their life. They want anointing. And the first question is for what? What do you want it for? So you'll be speaking and people will fall down. If that is your definition of the anointing, if that is your scope, you know, especially the youth, we like power. And, and there's nothing wrong with it. You like the fact that you just sit down and say, I'm speaking. Some of you, while I was talking and things were happening, you were, it was as if you were pouring cold water in your body. Calm down. The Lord is speaking to you right now. Calm down. If there is no passion in your heart to see his kingdom come, I am telling you now, you do not need the anointing. And you shall receive dunamis. Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Please project it for us. And you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you. And that power is to an end. It says, and you shall be what? Witnesses. Witnesses. Who is a witness? Who is a witness? If Tosin slaps this gentleman and I saw it, what do you call me? A witness. If we go to the court, I say, Tosin, really slap. I saw it. So I'm a witness. The Holy Ghost makes you a witness. You were not there when Jesus died. Are you, are you getting what I'm saying? You were not there when Jesus died. Were you there? You were not there on the cross. But now you are standing to represent a message that you were not there physically. So the Holy Ghost says, at least I was, I, was, I was there. I was not in Jesus on the cross, but I was around. I saw everything. Let me partner with you. You do the talking and then I will prove that you are not a liar. Are you getting what I'm saying? So you tell the sick that Jesus has healed you. All of this rubbish sickness is over. And the Holy Ghost says, yes, I was there on the cross. By his stripes, this guy has been healed. And you stretch forth your hands. And the Holy Ghost validates that your claims are true. Everyone say, I'm a witness. But the, the challenge is that many of us are not witnesses indeed you have roommates you have people in your workplace and there's no transformation no transformation the lord is speaking to us tonight hallelujah i may not have time to talk so much about it but i i, I really wanted to talk extensively on soul winning tonight when god just took over we give him praise hallelujah we give him praise because at least he visited people and he blessed people but the question i have for us is that who is coming to the saving knowledge of jesus christ because of the investments of the spirit upon your life there are many of us who are the only ones who are born again in our family there are many of us you leave people just in and you get up and carry your bible and come for koinonia and you are happy again and again we've had people here especially students when they're in their final year some of them get to find out about koinonia 
it's not like they do not know but for many people the god of this world has blinded their minds they don't care are you getting my point point? and some of us just sit down we just watch and the devil keeps destroying these lives and then at a point where they have two or three weeks to get out of zaria then they come and you see them crying and wondering and getting angry with you and you say sorry it's okay now and then you don't do anything about it again the lord is speaking to us do you know why many ministries let me be sincere with you do you know why many ministries are small small in terms of membership and small in terms of impact look at every ministry that there is a rich investment of the ministry of the holy spirit they are committed to turning many into righteousness right and transforming lives why should i want the holy ghost in my life why should i want his anointing when i'm not interested in praying for the sick right when i'm not interested in 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 seeing people set free you see the church has reduced anointing to money hello hello and many of us are already becoming victims of this theology our concept of anointing is just power to prosper so i have the anointing meaning i have the anointing to prosper financially so you buy the car you buy the clothes you build the house you do everything and you say i'm anointed if you have ever doubt my anointing Look at the fruits of my anointing. Car. House. Will car go to heaven? Answer me. Will house go to heaven? Listen, listen, brothers and sisters. We must begin to live having the passions of God in our heart. There are many of us here. We used to be committed to genuine evangelism. Genuine evangelism. And we are allowing this this demonic wave of complacency in the church to just come around there are many churches i say this with all apology and due respect they cannot even remember the last time they made an altar call and they don't care correct they don't care to an extent that we can preach and look at many evangelical meetings and crusades right now on the crusade ground is money they are raising and doing miracles as great as that is the end of all of these things is to see a soul not just saved in terms of the religiosity saved but lives transformed every society is a reflection of the quality of the mindsets that are there this is why we are passionate and committed we do everything that we do week in week out to make sure that souls are saved and lives are transformed you will notice that i've almost not missed any koinonia meeting no matter where i am no matter where i am i try to make sure that friday i am back you know why because this work is my primary assignment any external ministration is just an extension of the apostolic impact are you getting what i'm saying now but this is the core and some of you are pastors let me talk to you or some of you are men of god you have your church you are in a year you will only preach once or twice and members are just sitting down and being confused under different kinds of messages and theologies everybody coming with this i believe in the corporate impute of the body but the man, the one that God has put as a shepherd, you must stay and build the people. You are constructing an ideology and it must be sustained so that the people are built in that ideology. So that they won't be tossed through and through by every junk and every wind of doctrine. There are some things when some of you hear now, you won't even pray about it. Is that true? On account of what you have known. The word of God comes to build you. But when it builds you, it creates a sense of responsibility. You can't just be falling for nothing and then you stand up and you just clean your body. And when you are going, you say, Guy, I fell today again. Oh, I've been falling the last three weeks. This person said, Me too. Oh, this thing, I don't know how it works. That's not the goal. It's not a thing to just, it's, it's, 
is for you how many of you here have have sat down to say look bring five thousand bring five thousand let's make a very serious tract tract that is well edited and and has the kingdom not religion say i don't have a ministry you don't need a ministry you need passion you see that's the mindset we all have huh we believe that for impact to ever happen you must have a ministry so three friends come together they bring the five five thousand and say come let's settle this in. who is the geo of this group who is the real geo if they sow a seed now who does it go to that is to be carnally minded the bible says is death that's that's really what carnality is that you are already that see judas was not a bad person judas was a carnal person he looked at jesus and he had a business idea the name of his business idea was jesus how he can use jesus christ and make money that was all that was why he didn't even use the money he thought that when they come to catch jesus christ he would do his majestic thing again when he found out that that thing had backfired he died he killed himself how many of us here we are on facebook some of us some of us are on twitter some of us are and we well not 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 many i say this for the sake of those who will be listening to the message there are many of us it's just rubbish if you are happy today everybody will know on facebook that you are happy joyful the sun is shining tomorrow if you are angry this world what a dark place your whole your whole emotional life on display idleness we don't live with the consciousness of the kingdom as you are laughing please take seriously what i'm saying hallelujah yet we want to see the glory of god in our lives what is wrong with using your posts and say lord i may not be a man of god i may not have the power to heal the sick now but i commit myself is that true to making sure that every week one soul is saved i must come for koinonia with somebody sister how has your beautiful face translated into soul winning in the kingdom let me talk to ladies your beauty is either bringing people into the kingdom or taking people out of the kingdom is that true there's nothing as neutral so the brother sees you and says sister you are very fine say we give glory to the, the name of the lord i'm inviting you let me use this opportunity and invite you if you are afraid of talking to the person about jesus christ some of us once they just say you are beautiful they just say ah let me not bring jesus into it as if jesus is putting sugar inside food you know it's as if let me let me savor this moment now it doesn't come every day let me enjoy it jesus stay away let me not bring any religiosity and then the lord watches you from the throne and says you pray you want a ministry you want a ministry where you are everywhere you want an international ministry and god sees your heart and he knows that there are some levels of the anointing if we give this person you are going to be a disaster to the kingdom and he measured a thousand cubits that man was there until he proved that he was faithful then another thousand cubits was measured there are some of us even if you fast for 100 days i am telling you more anointing will not come until you step up your passion and your and your reckless abandon for the things of the kingdom we're afraid of being looked at as being fanatical right so many of us i'm not a man of god please please i can i can so see it you know there's this theology people teach there are those who give there are those who preach many people say i'm in the category of the givers no everybody is in all three categories you must give you must pray you must preach hallelujah don't just say me i'm a giver and then because the man of god really needs money desperately he said you are doing the same thing with me you who is giving me i'm preaching is all the same thing it's true that it's the same thing but if it's the same thing it means you can switch it's still the same thing to who has changed because of you how many of us does your presence judge sin and iniquity listen to what i'm saying does your presence i'm not talking of condemnation right i'm not talking of condemning people and just writing people off that's 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 something else 
That's a theology that came from hell. But does your presence judge sin and iniquity truly? That someone wants to do something bad and your presence is an inconvenience to the person. For some of us, your presence is a, is a catalyst. Let's say, hey, thank God, you have even come, sir. No. And then let me not even, let me not just bypass this. How many of us have truly made up our minds to part with iniquity? Listen, listen. Please do not ever think that there is a way of negotiating your way into intimacy with God. If you really want authentic power, iniquity must be far from you. When I talk of iniquity, you, you know what I'm talking about. It must be far. Don't say it does not matter. Don't say it does not matter. I'm repeating it. You must hear me. Don't say it does not matter. You will never walk in authentic power. That's why a lot of people cast out demons. The demons cast them too. Because they know that Jesus said, Satan cometh to me and does not find anything of himself. We joke around with the issue of sin and iniquity in the body of Christ. And then we believe that because God is gracious, right? Iniquity is what will give Satan access to your life, your state of heart. Iniquity is not just sleeping around or drinking and smoking. They are fruits of that iniquity. Iniquity is a state of heart that is perpetually rebellious towards God and the laws of the kingdom. The psalmist said, if I cherished iniquity in my heart, the Lord would not have heard me. Who shall ascend to the hill of the Lord? He said, he that has clean hands and a pure heart. When there are still Christians giving bribe and taking bribe, you will never see the hand of the Lord. Don't say it does not matter. You want job. Somebody saying, bring 250,000. And you are happy. Say it's like that. It's Nigeria. Please don't bring any church thing here. Bring it oh, Bring it. Because you are the... Don't try to dichotomize your life. And say this is my social life. This is my spiritual life. What is the meaning of that nonsense? In one of the revelations, the four living creatures were in one body. Huh? Four dimensions functioning in one body. We must be far from iniquity. It has been the ancient key to the presence and the power of God. And by the grace of God Almighty, we will not water it down in Koinonia. We will preach the full gospel. I will tell you the truth. The secrets that bring the glory and the presence of God. There are many of us, we watch all kinds of nonsense. We think it does not matter. Look at, look at the way your mind is. Huh? You can't look at a beautiful lady and just go free. As soon as they are sharing the grace, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, you feel like starting another service for yourself because you have, you have polluted your mind watching all kinds of nonsense. It's a culture. It's a sacrifice. Am I blessing you tonight? Oh yes, it's a sacrifice. There are many of us ladies, anybody, you can even be walking on the road, somebody will just park and say, enter. You say, oh, really? Let me enter first and find. What sort of, don't you live by values? Everybody say values. Say it, shout it, values. As a kingdom citizen, never forget this. We live by values. You may see us jump around, but let me tell you, the love of God constrains us. Hallelujah. Sister, let people be able to look at your life and say, how can a beautiful lady like this not be loose? And he said, no, I may be beautiful, but I have sold, I'm, I've given myself like a love slave to God. That I'm beautiful. You know, many brothers see our beautiful ladies. You know Koinonia has pretty ladies, right? Brothers, say amen. amen. They are your wives too, so say amen. amen. But listen to me now. The issue here is that before the transition between now and when they become your wives, you must mind yourself and discipline yourself and be a genuine Christian. Hallelujah. Brothers, let me give you a little secret. If you don't mind yourself with respect to ladies, I'm not talking of sleeping around ladies. 
men that are over conscious about ladies never encounter the presence of God powerfully I'm not talking of sleeping around you are just thinking it's, it's, still, it's still the same thing you are, you are stopping your mind from entering certain dimensions of the secret place I'm not saying frown at any lady after corner saying mm, I'm pressing it to God no that's not what I'm saying There are many of us, our own encumbrances is what I call carnality. What you wear. You can be thinking of what to wear for Koinonia from Saturday. Which one will I wear? Let me add, it's, it's good. We believe in excellence, but be careful lest it corrupts your time. We believe in excellence, but let me tell you, it's better to wear bathroom slippers and come and focus and flog it out with destiny and change your life. Who cares whether you wear your Versace or Gucci, thank God. But demons can bypass that Versace and oppress your life. And that's what we are trying to tackle in this place. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you take care of your spiritual life, then you can beautify your body. On the other hand, let me balance it. On the other hand, there are some of us that are careless about our our bodies we, we do not know that is still part of spirituality right what you wore yesterday you just look at it smell it it's not very smelly you just carry it and you're on your way to koinonia no. be intentional about your coming here don't make it look like it's a mistake be intentional plan these are all aspects of the kingdom let everything about your life neatness neatness thoroughly some of us are very dirty the way you are sitting down looking at me like this your rooms there are still plates there. all these things are i'm just showing you how that your life must draw people it will either draw people towards god or away from him and don't you say it does not matter the bible says add to your faith virtue the word virtue there is moral excellence Say, I'm changing. Especially if you really are. Say it, I'm changing. Because some of you, as God is speaking to you, go back to your rooms and wash that plate this night. Wash it this night. Hallelujah. If, come, sweetheart. If I'm going to get married to this lady, I'm taking my revelation of God together with all the unrenewed liabilities that I have I'm coming to say bring your own and, and let's, let's, let's wed in holy matrimony the question is are you going to be a blessing to your partner or the person will look at you and say had I known what deceived me what didn't I see huh say I'm a blessing the bible says in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed bless you you must be a soul winner from today. Whatever you will do to bring souls to the kingdom, I say whatever in the positive way, right? Don't go and do all kinds of Babylonian things and say whatever, let souls be one. No, in the kingdom, the means is as important as the end. I've taught you, right? Because if, if you say, I am doing this and that so that souls will come, I, I allow the man to go for a weekend with me because I'm trying to win him between now and the next one month he must be born again no no that's not that's not the kind of born again we're talking about praise the lord say in the name of jesus say in the name of jesus i become serious with my spiritual life in the name of jesus i lay aside every weight and everything that corrupts my christian testimony Two more things I'll talk about and then we'll pray and we'll be done. Hallelujah. I want to talk about two things I have seen across that stops many souls from coming to the kingdom. Number one is anger among believers. Write it. I don't know where this impartation of the spirit of anger flew and came from. There are many of your anger is not demons the demons left since february miracle service but the anger is still there 
anger, rage. It is an aspect of your Christian life you must blot out. You must blot out. Please write it. Anger. You can be as calm as a dove. But when you get angry, you can give it to anybody. There are some sisters right here in this place. You would have been married since. If only you address this issue. If you like, go to prophet, apostle, pastor, teacher. You must change that. Thing. There are some brothers here. You don't have friends. Say, I don't care. I'm in a world all by myself. You have beat everybody close to you because of anger. Your younger ones run away from you. There's nothing about your life that is pleasing because of anger. There are many pastors today. The anger and the rage they have, they can finish preaching. Even on stage, they can almost slap the other person. I said, sing ten or what, what are you singing? And you are wondering. And then the guy turns and says, let's pray. And he's looking and say, let's go. Number two, immorality. Immorality. Let's bury this thing this night. Look at me. Look at me. Do not let anyone, please, 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 koinonia, my conscience must be clear before God and I must tell you, do not let anyone convince you, convince you, that a life of immorality, you can be able to patch your Christian experience and patch immorality. I'm saying it now. You must hear me in Jesus' name. I'm, I'm telling you this from the depths of my heart. There are many of you as I'm talking, even the Holy Spirit is saying, thank you, Jesus. Finally, I'm getting to, I'm not condemning you. <laughs> I tell you the number of believers sir the number of believers that are compromising on their christian integrity especially over the issue of immorality this is probably one of the biggest reasons why many souls do not come to the kingdom if you're involved in all those things i love you but you must stop this night in jesus name say amen whether it be, you are part of it or not say amen Immorality is not just sleeping around. Hold on. So that you don't just say, thank God, me, I don't sleep around. Even God knows. Hold on. Pornography. Pornography. Right now we have our blackberries. It's amazing. You check Christian phones and see the kinds of things there. I will talk about it. Pornography. All kinds of other devilish things. And don't just blame the devil the day your roommate sees you and says ah, ah, what is this with naked they say, it's, it's Satan. I'm, I'm even waiting for the end of the month no, don't mock God don't mock God don't make it look like you come for miracle service and say Lord I'm open and then you receive that one there are many of us we are great men and women of God but this is the setback in our lives right look, listen to me this is, this is Bethel, the place of bread huh what I'm doing to you now is like a, jo a doctor giving a patient injection. You feel the pain, but that chloroquine must enter so that you will be healed. Immorality. Sisters, let me talk to you. You must create rules in your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying? If you have not been doing it, create rules. If you are in a relationship, talk about it. You are in a relationship with, with a lady. Part of the reasons why you are in a relationship with her is because you are physically attracted to her. Sit down and be saying, I'm a man of God and you'll be very surprised. Warn yourself. Tell yourself, myself, behave. Receive grace from God. Create boundaries. Huh? I, I will tell you this. Don't think, oh, this is the law. Mm -hmm. Man, if this law is going to keep you focused and useful, so be it so be it hallelujah there are many of us study yourself sister you know you are very vulnerable huh don't go as i say i know he's just a pastor it's been long since i washed his plate was the plate not washed 
was it not washed? Thank God for your generosity, but you must be careful. Anything you cannot do in the open is questionable. Are you getting what I'm saying? And many of us who are pastors here, you are the, we are the ones that are subject to the greatest attack. Hear me. Hear me. Man of God, you accepted the call and you are careless with your life. You will be very surprised. If there is the call of God upon your life, guard your anointing. You see the way men embarrass themselves. You can fake healing. Deliverance is what will really show you whether you are all of that. You'll be casting at the demons. The demons are just laughing and saying all kinds of things. It should never be so. We are going to pray because I know that there are people affected in these areas. Are you getting my point? And trust me, if you think you need help, please see me for counseling. I am more than more than willing to help you. We are a family. Don't say I'm a man of God. I'm struggling with masturbation or struggling with immorality and I think it's, it's, it's an issue. There's nothing to be ashamed of. Are you hearing what I'm saying? There is nothing to be ashamed of. Because you see, spiritual things cannot be hidden for too long. They will find expression. Immorality is something we, we must work. I know God is helping us. We are young people, right? The TV, the media, all kinds of things. The, the challenge on the average young man right now is, is maybe 100 times more than it used to be 40, 50 years ago. I understand that, but it's still not an excuse. And please don't let anybody fool you that everybody is doing it. Huh? There are many of us that will tell you who is not doing it. No. Mm -mm. There are people who truly, truly have taken advantage of the grace of God and they love God sincerely. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. May you be one of such in the name of Jesus Christ. Make up your mind. And if you think you cannot hold yourself, start finding a wife quick. Quick. No, 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 no. I'm very serious. I'm not playing games. The Bible says it. It is Bibles. I'm not saying you're married because, mm -mm, but the Bible says if peradventure in your quest to love God and you find out that you have prayed, you have fasted, you know that this one is not demons again. Please marry. I'm telling you this. Marry. It is a biblical. I say it doesn't change anything. Are you joking? Are you married to know whether it changes something or not? Just marry, obey the Bible. Don't start arguing with scriptures. Anger, immorality, immorality. You have a, you have pastor friends or groups sit together and talk about this. Talk about this in love. Don't condemn people. And you, when somebody comes to meet you and says, "See." I find myself sleeping around. You say, I knew it. The way I've been looking at you, I know you are not straight. No, no, no. That ministry is not given to you because that's the issue. That's, listen, listen, we're rounding up. That's the reason why many people are unable to open up because they are afraid. They don't trust us men of God. They don't trust. Somebody comes and opens up and tells you, this is the challenge in my life. This is what I'm going through. They will say, ah, have you had forget everybody you see preaching on stage oh, people are dying in silence the other person say what are you talking about I say I will just you something happened no as a minister you are a steward don't betray people's trust on you are, are you hearing what I'm saying but please I'm talking to you this is an admonishment from the depths of my heart you feel that there are issues compromising your Christian experience and you need help by the grace of God God has anointed us to be able to offer you help. And with Jesus' joy and with every open heart, it's a privilege. But don't sit down and die. You can fake it before men. But you see, you are, it's, it's a seed you are sowing. It's a seed you are sowing. We are going to pray. Just two prayer points. Rise up on your feet. And we'll be done for tonight. Today's service was another dimension by the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Listen. Hallelujah. While we are taking the first prayer point, at the same time, an altar call is going to be made. Please, everyone listen. This is a serious altar call. There are many of us tonight who are saying, Lord, please take my whole life. 
I'm surrendering everything to you. I'm tired of living life my own way. You may have even given your life to Christ before, but you know that you are not serious with God and you want to step up your Christian experience. God has shown you that he wants to use you. He's shown you that he wants to do mighty things. But you are saying, Lord, I have not truly surrendered everything. The moment we start praying, I'd like you to just come and go on your knees here. I would like to lead you to the Lord Jesus Christ. Young, old, whatever, please. You need to truly make up your heart and your mind to the Lord. Hallelujah. The moment we start praying, please, I'd like you to come up. We're out of time. Prayer point number one. Prayer point number one. You're going to say, Lord, put a passion for souls. Put a genuine passion for souls in my life. That beginning from tonight, I will begin to be serious about winning souls and making sure that people are established in the faith. Lift your voice and pray. While they are doing that, all those who need to come out, find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you as you are coming. The remaining, the, the rest of us, please keep praying. God bless you. All of you who are coming, just come and kneel down here. Before God. There are still people sitting down. The Lord is speaking to you. If you need to be out, don't wait for anybody. Find your way and come. While the rest of us pray. Take it seriously tonight. This is the beginning. Those of us who need to come out. This is the beginning of your journey. Your spiritual journey to relevance. Your spiritual journey. Find your way to the front. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. This is home for you. Find your way. The Holy Ghost is speaking to you. If the Holy Ghost is telling you you need to be here, then you need to be here. I surrender all. I surrender all. Those of you in front, open up yourself to the Lord from the depths of your heart. I surrender all. I surrender all. Let's sing one more time. I surrender all. I'm not the person I used to be. I am a brand new person. Hallelujah. I'm going to pray for you. Listen, all of you. You are not the brother or the sister that just came and knelt down here. You are walking up totally free. I don't care what it is you have done. I don't care what has been the testimony. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all things new. He makes all, the th all things new. In the name of Jesus. Holy Spirit. I declare by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ. That you use these ones. May they be powerful men and women. From today transform their lives. I break the power of sin over your life. In the name of Jesus. I break the power that causes you to rebel against the ways of God. I declare that from today you will have passion for the things of God. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Congratulations. Thank you so much. I'd like you to celebrate them, Koinonia. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Please rise up. Rise up. God bless you. Hallelujah. I salute you for making this decision. I'd like you to follow the ushers. Follow the gentleman waving his hands. They'll have your information on Tuesday. Um, you pray with the prayer department so that you get filled with the Holy Ghost. For those of you who are not filled with the Holy Spirit, they will administer the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Please follow the gentleman waving his hands. God bless you. Celebrate them, Koinonia. <laughs> Hallelujah. Our time is up. We can take um, another prayer request. Well, that's okay for today. Um, before I invite those of us who are worshipping with us for the first time let me just take a few announcements now I want to announce something please next week Friday the Lord put this in my heart next week Friday I like us 
as a family of faith and all those who are connected to this ministry all across the nations, all across this nation, please I like us to fast. Hallelujah. We are going to fast. And your fasting starts from 6 p.m. on Thursday. Hallelujah. Not 6 a.m. on Friday. 6 p.m. That's Friday night. You won't eat anything. We're going to be praying. There are certain things that God wants to birth and bring. Hallelujah. So we're fasting from Thursday, 6, 6, what? 6 p.m., right? And we'll run it as a marathon until, um, if I said Friday, 6 p.m., we will not eat before coming. So we'll break by 3 p.m. 3 p.m. is okay. So that you can eat before coming. Please, listen. It's a dry fast, complete dry. There's no sipping water or honey. There's none of those things. Please. I listen, listen. Those are our are, are children here. For the sake of the children, um, you may they, they can just start their fast from six in the morning to maybe twelve. But if they feel they can go the extra mile, no problem. If you're sick and you are on medication, you can choose whether to join us or not. But please, everyone, Thursday from 6 p.m. It's not just to fast and sleep. By the grace of God, from Friday morning, this, this place will be open. Prayer department from Friday, if you people can pay the price, will allow this place, while the setup is going on, you can stay around, pray around, just pray and prepare. By 3 o'clock, you go and eat well and come. You won't die, please. Don't frown at me like that. You won't die. This, listen, this, something will happen to your spirit. Some of you have done it. You've done more than that. But just run it that marathon. So whatever you have to do, just know that once it is 6 o'clock, even if you have not eaten the whole day, once it's 6 o'clock, know that the vehicle has started moving. Praise God. It's moving down till that time. All, all escorts, all escorts, you are stretching till 6. All escorts, we are not stopping by 3. You are stretching till 6. All your food, you can come and eat it here. Come and die here. But till 6, please. So, the whole, is not 12 hours now. It's 24 hours. And there is, I know that there is capacity that we need to build in the spirit. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salman. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him, that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ, and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then, don't forget to like this video don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing jesus i'll see you again bye